Christ. <laughs> um, cool. We're going. Hell yeah. Cool. Episode 26 with Dominique DaCosta. I don't think I've ever said your last name. You've literally never said my full name ever. I've said Dominique. I do say Dominique sometimes. But like my full, full name. Is like, it that's DaCosta? Weird. Am I saying yeah, that Yeah, no, part you're right? saying it right. Okay. It's just like nobody ever says my full name ever. Well, you're welcome. Oh, thanks. Here you are. It's a treat and you're spoiled. Um, Apparently. Dom, I have been <laughs> working on everything that I can't talk about right now. So okay. it's a strange time. Where it's like, it feels like I've been doing nothing lately because I can't talk about anything that I have yeah. been doing. But I've been so busy and uh, dealing with problems that are so not fun to solve. So I'm very happy to like be here and hanging out <laughs> and doing something that is very enjoyable and casual and relaxed. Um, you're finally home from tour. Yes. You've been gone for a month-ish. Yeah, a little right? over a month. A little over a month. Uh, uh, how was that? It's a bit crazy place to start. It's an open place to start. Um, but overall, everything went well. It was a good experience. Very, very good experience. It. I went into it of like, okay, let's see if I even like doing this. And if this is the only tour I ever get, like at least I did it once and that's cool. And I blinked and it was over. That's a weird pressure because you've always looked forward to touring. And yep. as you're, I'm hearing you say that for the first time, it's like, this is when you're finally like, you've aimed your life at this thing. And this yep. is your first time. It's like an astronaut going to the moon. It's like, you're finally on your way. It's like, fuck, what if I don't like it up there? What if I'm scared of heights all of a sudden? I like really thought about that. Cause yeah. I'm like, I'm home all the time. I've never lived like that. Like I've moved out of my parents' house for sure, but I'm always in close contact with like friends and family. And this is the first time that like, I'm gone. I am nowhere near, like, I am with strangers, I am in strange places, like, this is the ultimate version of, like, being on your own, yeah. and I was like, oh my god, like, what if I, what if I don't like this, like, that's terrifying, and I blinked and loved every second of it, and it was <laughs> over, yeah. and I was like, I was home for a day, and I was like, why, can I go back, like, what yeah. are we doing here, guys? But adjusting to that home is always so tough. That was, to me, the hardest part of the whole experience, yeah. is that, those first, like, 48 hours home of, like, what is this, how does this, why took, doesn't this place move? It took me, it took me a week to really be, like, mm -hmm. okay with being back. The first couple of days, I'm like, where are my friends, like, what, where is everybody, like, I'm why right am I here? here? <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been home now? Uh, like a week or two. Okay. Yeah. Feels like so much longer than that, but I'm it's sure. like I had to jump right back into it because I had like weddings uh -huh. lined up and random shoots and like going back to like working at a grocery store and there's nothing to like, like I love my job. It's a great place and everything. Great people. But it's also like, I was just like in front of like thousands of people and like running around on stage and my job is a concert. And now I'm like, oh yeah, how's your lettuce today? Like, it's great. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just definitely like a, okay, like. It's real reality sure. check, you yeah. know, um, you mentioned all the strange places, strange people. I think it's a great place to start. So, yeah, I know this isn't a band that you've been working with for 10 years. Like, yeah. Uh, my memories, they kind of get a call out of the blue and it's like, all right, let's figure this out. Like, yeah. Talk to me about getting that first call and how much time you have before a tour. What was that process like? So I got a message on Instagram one day. I was like sitting in my apartment, just like, what am I doing with my life? And all of a sudden the vocalist Dakota sends me a message on Instagram and it was the most adorable, like, intro I've ever seen. She's like, hey, sorry to bother you, but, like, uh, we were really interested if you wanted to come on tour with us. Like, you could totally say no. There's no pressure. And in my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, no pressure. I could say no to, like, my lifelong dream. And you just, like, casually asking me this. It's like, yeah, no, it's fine. Um, so I just sat there and I was like oh my God, like, I have to take this. I didn't even ask anything. I was like, yeah. And then I was like, wait, yeah, when? Um, mm -hmm. So I got two weeks notice. I had to kind of figure out my whole life. Um, so it kind of like started and then had a pause and then restarted. It was like a, a weird way with the dates um, lined up. And I had a wedding in between, but everything kind of lined up so perfectly that I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. Yeah. And it all happened because... Um, I went, Jeremy hit me up one day to, he's like, Hey, I need an extra assistant for a photo shoot. I was like, yeah, sure. Whatever. I was supposed to do something else in Massachusetts that day. And I was like, all right, like, we'll see how long the shoot goes. And if I can make it to the other thing, like I'll go. And if not, like whatever. And I didn't even do much that day. It was more just like I hung out and like helped out whatever he needed. And these guys were just like the nicest people. Like we got along so quickly and it was just like, there was no like awkwardness. It was just, they were super nice. We were, seemed around the same age, and that's literally all it took. They saw my stuff, and they're like, yeah, we want you. Like, crazy. <laughs> and then you get a call. You're sitting in your apartment, and now you have two weeks to figure out what to tell your job, what to tell your friends and family, yep. what to – like, you haven't been on tour before, so I feel like yep. it's figuring out where do I brush my teeth. Like, it's all the dumb little things as well as the big life stuff. Uh, I, I know from the outside that process is a little bit stressful. That you're a little bit hectic. Uh, how do you feel like you did throughout that? So you 
prepped out. You, I know you were figuring out all the gear you need. Like, did you yeah. feel prepared going into it? Did you arrive day one being like, I have nothing going for me? So what was really cool is I hit up a bunch of different photographers, videographers, and people who've experienced touring either for a day or like this is what they do for a full time job. And um, I got a lot of people's different perspectives. Some people were like, okay, you need this gear, these batteries or like this situation. And then somebody else is like, we'll make sure the band has room for you that you're included in like the daily rate. It's like all these different perspectives were really cool to hear. So that helped me be really prepared. And like I spent all the money I needed to ahead of time with like gear, and which, more. yeah, which totally sucked yeah. like in the moment. But at the same time, I felt like gear wise, I went into the tour with like, I have everything I need and I'll just like pay it off when I need to. Like I wanted to mm. be like as ready as possible because like you said, I had no idea what I was walking into. Yeah. You can hear everything. You can read every book and read every article until you experience the actual thing. Like you don't know what you're doing. And I think especially for you, cause you're going to a arena tour, yeah. which is very different than what a lot of us have been. Yeah. So it's a Breaking Benjamin headlining tour. Bush is direct support. Yep. And you guys are opening, yep. uh, which is an insane way to spend your first month on the road. Like yeah. Everyone you're talking to has toured the Palladium or the Palladiums of you know the whole country, whatever, yeah. and international. They've been to Australia, done all these cool things. But that's been playing to 2,000 people, 1,000 people, yeah. 3,000 people, maybe a festival occasionally. And you're walking to arenas of 10, 20,000 capacity. Yeah. I mean, no one could really prepare you for that. Yeah. No, it's... <laughs> It's definitely crazy. And what really helped is so we had a one off date in South Carolina at the House of Blues. And then we came home immediately after. And I had I had a wedding to shoot. So it kind of worked out for me. But it also helped of like, okay, day one, what could we have done differently? What did I need? What didn't I need? And I like switched out stuff. I like switched out like bags like I had everything packed in my camera bag. It was so heavy and sucked to carry around. So at least I came home, like split stuff up and just having like a second bag to like carry my laptop in and everything else was like, okay, that's a move I was able to make. Mm -hmm. Having that gap literally between one day made the biggest difference. Interesting. Uh, what else did yeah. you change? So you had your bag. Did you leave any lens at home? Did you grab something you had left behind? Any like batteries, personal belongings? That you Luckily forgot? for that, I was pretty on top of things. Um, I think gear wise, I was pretty set because like I don't have a ton of gear, but what I do have can like get me across everything. And I only mm -hmm. left like one portrait lens at home because the chances of me needing it at 85 on the road were like slim to none. Mm -hmm. um, just the weight of the bags help. What I didn't know how to do is how to pack for myself for like a month because I didn't know I didn't know if like laundry was a thing on the road and I'm like I swear to God if I run out of underwear like I'm gonna freak out. And that's like, such a hard I thing to ask like, them. I'm like I'm just meeting you. Yeah. But like, yeah. I'm like I don't yeah. know what to ask and it's like I also like I, I freak out like I'll do anything to not be rude like I'll mm -hmm. try so nice to be like oh I don't want to like impose or yeah. anything and I didn't know like so we were supposed to have this renovated truck that we were gonna live in. Okay. So I'm thinking there's like no bathroom. There's nothing like that. I was like, there's no, not going to be laundry. Like I'm thinking we're like roughing it. We ended up getting like hotels all the time. The truck never worked out. So it was like there were conveniences on the road and it's like, yeah, I'm not the only person in the world who has to do laundry. Laundry is a thing on the road. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, now like going into the next one, like I know I can pack less because that suitcase <laughs> suck to take her around like that was the uh, i think out of the whole tour like that's what i hated the most and it didn't survive like i literally broke it on the last day also just the embarrassment of having the biggest oh my out god of yeah. yeah and i'm like yeah i'm a girl but also like this sucks i don't want this <laughs> uh what did you guys travel in mostly so the truck thingy didn't work so out. the truck didn't work out it was like renovated it was so cool they had like six different bunks for us to sleep in like a little kitchen area and everything but it wasn't realistic to like drive on the road with people because it would be the the they didn't have a suspension to like support it. So it would be like way <laughs> too bumpy. And there was just so many things. So we were traveling in a suburban with a trailer the whole time. And then when we could, we would like get hotels. And then other times it was like the drive between venues was like 10 to 12 hours and you had to be there. So we would like leave whatever venue we we're at, like midnight, 1 a.m., whenever we were like done packing up and just went straight there. And you kind of just like roughed it. So you know, that makes always for like a fun and like tiresome adventure. Uh, I always look back fondly on like the Walmart parking lots yep. in the morning. Uh, was that your experience as well? Waking up at 8 a.m. in a Walmart? Uh, not a Walmart. We would just do go straight to the venue. Okay. Once I got woken up in Louisiana at an IHOP and that feels like a fever dream. I wonder if I've been to that IHOP. I've been to many an <laughs> IHOP in Louisiana. Yeah, I have my friends out there. Like, I've oh, been down there many right. times. Yo, it was the weirdest experience. Like it was 3 a.m. And I... Obviously, we're the me only there. ones there. And I'm just getting woken up. I was up for almost like two days straight because mm -hmm. that's when I had just started working for like Breaking Benjamin on the tour. 
And so I just like been editing and they just like wake me up and they're like, yo, where'd I have? I'm like, okay, what? The International House of Pancakes. <laughs> yeah. And I just like walk in and I just sit there just like, mm-hmm. just like this is like every effort is taking me to just like sit up. Waitress comes up to us. We're all like ordering. She's like, oh no, baby, you don't want that. And we're just like, what? <laughs> she just keeps telling us we don't want these things. And we're like, but we do. That's the most Louisiana thing. Yeah. yeah. And I was just so confused because my entire like thought process was like, yeah, my first time in Louisiana, I'm going to get some Cajun food. Like I'm going to go adventure and see some cool stuff. And my, it was just IHOP at 3 a.m. Yep. There is something to comfort food, like when you're on the road and everything is so foreign throughout the time. Like there's yeah. something about nice that like an IHOP is the same basically everywhere. And it was many actually the first time I'd ever been to an IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> How is that possible? She said, I don't go out to eat. I'm so cheap. Have you been to an IHOP since? Was that your singular IHOP experience? No, and it was a bummer. So I want to go back to an IHOP and be like, I need you guys to like fix this experience for me. Because she kept telling us all the things we didn't want. And then she still brought out everything wrong. Like she she was super nice. Like no, like no hate on Mm -hmm. her. But also like. She's not listening. It's okay. Yeah, no, I I feel like at some point, some random person must be like, they're talking about you. That's my number one fear, and I've looked at the numbers, and I promise <laughs> there's not enough people <laughs> listening for that to be a problem. Hopefully, in the future, it goes big enough that like I can look back at this and be like, I should have been more careful. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, there's one story in particular on the tip of my tongue that would be fun to talk about, but is not quite ready for microphones yet, but I'm happy to okay. spill you in later. Um, going back, to, you said you started working with Breaking Benjamin halfway through the tour, yes. which is another big change. So yeah, uh, Another Day Dawns is opening the tour. I think it's also their first like big tour so the, as well. Yeah, this was their first like huge tour. Like They've been touring for a little bit, like smaller stuff here and there, random festivals. Um, they've been a band since they were like 15. Mm-hmm. So they've been going for like 10 years now. So this was a huge, huge opportunity for them. And what's really cool is, so the lead singer, his favorite band is Breaking Benjamin, and, like, Ben is who inspired him to become a vocalist. So for this to tour to be a thing at all was, like, a huge deal. I'm super sick. And getting to, like, watch that dynamic was really, really cool and just, like, see somebody's dream come true right in front of them is, like, oh, this is awesome. Like, hell yeah for you, man. Yeah. Um, is Ben a person? Like, Benjamin is Ben the, is the vocalist. Okay. So he is the actual, he is the only original member. Um, all the other members have been brought in like mm-hmm. over over the years. There's been a bit of a change up, As there is, which yeah. I only learned on this tour. <laughs> all I knew was like, yeah, I listened to like Breaking Benjamin in like middle school. Like of this course. is crazy. Like yeah. what? I was yeah. like, yeah, Tire Chain. Woo. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know any other songs. Um, hopefully they don't hear that either. <laughs> but it's okay. You've now learned them, so yes. that's okay. That's what matters. Um, hell yeah. So talk to me about the first few days of tour. So it's your first time being on the road having to edit like overnight. Like I know you always yeah. the turnaround time, like as I think concerts kind of break the like we're more used to next day turnarounds than other industries probably. Yeah. But we're not used to doing it in a van every night. We're not used to doing it with people over our shoulders. Like, that always drove me nuts, yeah. like, editing. And someone looks over and it's like, oh, I like that. And I'm like, it's only halfway done. Like, fuck off. Yeah. Or I don't like that. I'm like, it's only halfway done. Let me let me finish yeah. it up. Uh, yeah. What was that process like of dealing um, with all those challenges? It was definitely different. Like you said, like, we've been doing concerts and stuff. And so, like, the 24-hour turnaround is, like, something I'm used to. And I was trying to hold myself to that of, like, okay, now it has to be more than ever. Because the another day dawns, they would have a signing after the show every night that I would run. So it's like they would go on. I would immediately start editing. I'd have to have a post up and then take them to their signing because then after all that's done, it's like, okay, it's like midnight, 1 a.m. and we have nothing Mm -hmm. up. So like some days it was tougher than others to like get something up. Um, And then when I started working for like another band, then it was like, okay, like, all right. Um, I also started tour managing these guys. So it was like all the like responsibilities were kind of like adding up. So the turnaround time was super, super important. Um, Editing in a van, luckily there was like a third row that I had to myself. So Mm -hmm. it was kind of like, I was able to not like spread out, but kind of have the area to like put my laptop somewhere. And I had um, a bag that kind of like had a backing. So it was like, okay, I got, somewhat of a comfortable setup to do it sure. but it was definitely like okay this is different um I was worried about I was paranoid about my hard drive like I know it's safe I know it's good but every second I'm like don't die don't die don't die mm-hmm. freaking out everybody asked me before I left she's like but what if something happens and I'm like shut up shut up shut up shut up nothing's gonna happen like nothing's gonna happen like I'm sorry um but you can only be as prepared as you can be you know um yeah. 
definitely having people like looking over my shoulder is like a thing for me. I never edit in front of people because of that. Cause mm-hmm. it's like what you see in camera versus what I can give you after the fact can like be two completely different things. And it's like, you have to like trust the process and I don't want anybody to know the process because I'm like, I get paranoid. I'm like, shut up. It's like, it's like you said, it's like, oh, well, I don't like, it's not done yet. Um, That's why audio is crazy to me. Like sitting in the studio, like uh, I will look at audio engineers sitting at their computer, with, like a whole band behind them, like as they're typing. Audio. So it's much like, pressure. oh, that's the worst setup ever to me of like having to like almost entertain them, like make sure they're happy and comfortable and like, yeah. be a host and also creative and the same thing while they're watching me be like not no thanks I like being alone in my room yeah there's so many layers to it and then also it's like there was a a lot of you just took the pictures like where's that picture Are you mm-hmm. done yet and I'm like I swear to god man you just saw me like running it's not like I'm sitting around and like doing nothing it's like you saw me just like doing a million things for you guys mm-hmm. you turn around and it's like it became a joke because they saw I was like they're like let's go Mm-hmm. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like, yo, chill. Did you ever get in? So uh, in sports, uh, I know what they do, like the sideline. I've always wondered how they get sport like post up, like when it's the 10th minute of the game. Yeah. And then they, like a minute later, it's live on Twitter. It's like, how does that work? And so what they're doing, I'm realizing is they take the photo on the camera. They Bluetooth it to someone who's editing upstairs and that person edits and posts it. Yeah. Uh, which isn't for us like we're not gonna do that at a concert necessarily but did you ever find any other shortcut between like camera sd card laptop like it seems like a long workflow just to get someone a single photo that we just took did yeah. you ever find like a shortcut there or was it always the long way it was always the long way i feel more comfortable that way and it's mm-hmm. like i'd rather take the few extra minutes and like upload and make sure everything's good because the days would go by so quickly if i feel like if i went any other route i would start to forget stuff especially because it's like this is my first time i need to get in like a comfortable workflow um, in the past, I found ways where there's apps you can upload it to your phone and like edit from there. But like I have such a like a uh, such a style now that I'm trying to develop and like play with that I'd rather have the more options on my laptop. Mm-hmm. And it was there was always time to like get back to my laptop because it's like I would shoot their set. Then there was a whole other band in between, so I'd have at least a half hour, forty five minutes to get something done. So even if it was, there was some nights where, yeah, it really was just one photo. But it's like I got that one photo up. Yeah, and then uh, um, I had a part two to that. I don't remember what it was though. That's such a bummer. My brain likes to like let things slide while I'm listening because yeah. this game of like listening and trying to think at the same yeah. time. And I'm really not a good multitasker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good at one task at a time. Um, workflow oriented. Oh well. Uh, life moves on. Uh, working for Breaking Benjamin. So halfway through the tour, you get tapped on the shoulder and say, hey, you've been doing an awesome job with the opener. You have no free time already. Can you work for the headliner? So <laughs> no. Okay. It went a little bit differently. Okay. Um, so apparently this was a deal that was set up without my knowledge, nice. but it okay. worked out in my favor. I think sure. it was just like a miscommunication. You know, so many things are going on and this one thing got slipped, but like no big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, at the time was doing content, just started like do, taking on some tour managing duties for another day dawns and I was running their merch. I've never done merch before. Like obviously I've worked in retail. I can sell shirts for sure, but it's all like the settlement and like all the behind the scenes stuff that I wasn't too comfortable with. And, um, Steven, the Breaking Benjamin's merch guy, was the nicest guy on the planet. He, like, walked me through all of that and was so helpful. So one day I kind of caught him on the side and was like, hey, dude, can I do anything for you? Like, you've helped me out so much, and, like, I appreciate it. I want to do something for you. And he's like, honestly, I just don't get to have a conversation with anybody because, like, I'm always so busy. So we were just, like, talking, getting to know each other. And at one point it came up. He's like, yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer. I'm always running around. Like, I wish I could, like actually like watch the sets of the bands like I don't get to do that too often I was like yeah dude I get it I think I've only seen like a few minutes of Bush he's like aren't you supposed to be doing photos for Breaking Benjamin I was like what are you talking about he's like yeah that's why I'm like doing merch for you guys so there were only a select few dates where it wasn't venue sales so one of our representatives would have to like be at the merch table and like control everything And so we were only allowed one shirt and one CD. We didn't have like that much. And so he was going to sell it for us. And I would just take care of the settlements and like bringing stuff in and out. And I wasn't sure why. And I thought I was doing merch. And I'm like, whatever, you know, again, miscommunication, like things happen, too many hands in the pot. And he was like, yeah, no, that's why I'm doing merch for you guys. So you can do photos for us. And I was like, what? I stood there just like my whole life just didn't make sense. My brain Mm -hmm. stopped working and was like confusing. And then the tour manager just happened to walk over. And so we're talking to him like, hey, like 
am I supposed to be doing this? And he's like, yeah, all right, hop up there tonight. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, so I'm on tour, which is dream come true that I legitimately never, ever on the planet thought would actually happen. I'm with the, the band I was with, Another Day Dawns, the nicest guys ever. There was no awkward phase. They were so welcoming, so comfortable to be around, and they put on a great show. And then I blink, and then a band I used to listen to in middle school that is one of the most well-known bands in the country is like, yeah, come work for us. And I'm like, what? Not only come work for us, but I thought you were supposed to be working. Yeah. Like you're almost and at I'm a just, deficit instead of and like. And I'm just like, yo, what is happening right now? Like me? Or, there's not somebody behind me? Like you yeah. kidding me? So, of course, the rest of the night, like I, my brain shut off. I don't know how to think. And I'm just like, I have to do my normal duties of like taking care of everything. And then like. <laughs> take the biggest opportunity I've ever been handed in my entire life. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. So that night, um, we, were in, we were in Alabama that night. And so I took care of Another Day Dawns, did their stuff. And now I'm, like, whipping out their photos because now I have even less time. Mm-hmm. Get their stuff up. And then I go shoot Breaking Benjamin. And I shoot, like, majority of their set. I think they played, like, an hour, hour and a half or so. And it's like I still had to get my guys to their signing. So I was like, all right, let me shoot as much as I can. And I knew there was, like, random rules, but I didn't really know what they were the first night. So I was told I could get on stage just while it's black. But then, like, I got on the drum riser, and, like, people saw me, and I scared the drummer. So I got in a little bit of trouble for that. Um, It was a little funny. He handled it well. Um, But, yeah, I was, like, running around every possible way. Couldn't get on stage because, it's like, this is a huge band, and everything's very well lit. Like, you're not important. Don't be seen running around the venue like crazy. I stayed up till like 4 a.m., like getting everybody's photos done, sent mm-hmm. it. And of course at like 4.01, I'm like, why, why isn't he answered? Why isn't he answered? <laughs> they hate it. Oh my God, they hate it. And I was like trying to be so good the next day of just like, oh, hey, hi guys, what's up? Just like. Yeah. And this is like still early on where like the bands didn't really know each other. Like another day Dawns knew their bassist, um, the bassist Aaron. So like that helped some introduction, but it's like everybody's still so new. So we're not like comfortable with each other. Mm-hmm. And so I remember being in catering and the guitarist Keith was there and I was like, all right, I'm just going to like start a conversation and be like, hey, I was like, hey, you did a really good job last night. He's like, yeah, I saw you running around. I was like, yeah. And that's where it ended. I was like, they hated it. They hated it. I go up to the tour manager and I was like, hey, how'd I do? He's like, yeah, no, it was great. Awesome. You're going to be doing this all the time. Security guard. Um, there's one main security guard for um, Ben. He was, oh, my God, the coolest guy ever. He's, like, raving about the photos. They're, like, telling me, okay, like, these are the standards we need to follow. Okay, you're allowed to be on stage for this, uh, this, this, and this song. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I work for Breaking Benjamin. Like, I work for Breaking Benjamin. Like, oh, my God. Like, this is just going through my head. And then... That same day, almost every member came up to me and was like, yo, your photos are so sick. Like, oh, my God. And I'm like, <laughs> me? Like, are you sh-? I was like, yo, there's people in Hartford who don't want to work with me. And it's just like, and you, you, are, you, are you sure? And it just like blew my mind. That's awesome, yeah. It was the coolest thing ever. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, please. I'm still soaking it all. I'm laughing. Uh, when you mentioned your story of going behind the drummer getting in trouble, I think I've told it on here and I think I've told it to you, so I'll keep it brief, but it's my first night on tour. Uh, and I go behind the drummer because I wanted, yeah, the same, probably the same thing you were doing. Yeah. Uh, and I bump into like a surge protector <laughs> yeah. that turns out powers the whole venue, the whole sound system, like all the lights, like the whole nine yards. Uh, and so... The whole venue goes black, and I kind of look up, like, yo, what the fuck just happened? And the whole band, yeah. everyone's looking back at me, like, yo, what did you just fuck <laughs> up? Uh, and I remember just, like, plugging the thing back in and, like, pretending like that was going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. And there was, like, a second in my brain, I'm like, ooh, nobody saw it. Nobody noticed. And then they did. So I can totally relate to that first moment of, like, yeah, just you make mistakes, but it's a different stage that it's yeah. on. And, like, we've – yeah. And also, like, you've been there a hundred times. You've done that at the Webster a hundred times, and it's been no issue. But – in this context, things are different. Things yeah. change. And it like, wasn't to this caliber of a band that's yeah. like, if they've been around, they have certain standards of like what you are and aren't allowed to do. And that was a big thing to like learn mm-hmm. is the difference between like shooting at the Webster with like my friends bands and like people I know and venues I know versus like, okay, this is like an established band of like, you have to be up to certain standards. We have to have certain rules followed. Like, one thing, one important thing is like you have to be fully blacked out on stage. Like wearing something like this, like you can't, like you have to be fully blacked out, which is not a problem for me. I love wearing black. I was like, yes, more clothes. <laughs> um, but at the same time, it's like all these things you don't really think about. It's yeah. like, okay, 
you're allowed on stage, but only during these times. And it's like only because the drummer is aware of it. And it's like you, me just popping up that night, like that could have thrown him off. That could have thrown the song off. And it's like, then they look differently. And it's just like, everything has an effect on the other. And it's like a whole other side of things that I never even imagined. It's like really is its own world, which is crazy. Yeah. Uh, And my example that like in the context of directing a music video, it's like what I, what my one job is for a half hearted video say is like, uh, it's done by a film crew on a movie set. And like our jobs, our roles are similar. All the similar things are handled, but it scales to such a degree that instead of me being able to handle it, it requires a team of a thousand experts doing everything from the catering to the production and all those start to finish. And what you're saying is, yeah, it's the same thing on the audio side and on the music side of dealing with all the behind the scenes stuff that I think is interesting. What uh, surprised you about all that stuff that like you haven't been aware of? Yeah, there's so much going on back there that's tough to be... So I walked into this with thinking like, oh, yeah, we're all on the same level. Like everybody's going to be in the same area and hanging out and talking and whatever. And it's going to be like walking to a green room at the Webster or just like hanging out beforehand or like outside. It's just like everybody's together. Everybody's on the same level, like whatever. And it's like, no, that's not a thing. Like certain people only stayed on their tour bus. Certain people always stayed away. And it's like I wasn't at first I was like, is this an ego thing? Is it not? It's like these people are experienced. This is their life. It's like, they need their privacy. They have families. They have kids. It's like the bands we were with, it's like our age range was 25 to 30 for our band. And then everybody else is like late thirties, late forties, early fifties kind of thing. It's like, Hey, we've been doing this. So it's like, that was definitely a major aspect in things. Um, don't get me wrong. They still like partied and had tons of fun, but it was like that level of things was differently of like, we're not, it wasn't the big community expected at first. We Mm -hmm. definitely got there towards the end. And that was the heartbreaking part of like, okay, we're all together and we all love each other. Bye. See you. Maybe. (laughs) Yes. Oh no. Um, but yeah, just like the rules and honestly how everything's run. Like I've seen shows put together. I've never seen shows put together at this caliber. Mm-hmm. Like you show up to the venue and there is a stage. There's nothing else. The band brings in the lights, the sound system, the smoke, like everything. Mm-hmm. So it really goes from like this table to like an entire show and then taken back down that night. Like they used to say about Warp Tour, like we build a city in a day. Like that really is a thing and it's wild to see the difference in like how many people are a part of putting that together. Like the band, obviously everybody's there to see the band, but the bands wouldn't be anything without the like 20, 30 people behind them making sure everything runs perfectly. And it just gave me so much more of an appreciation for like all the behind the scenes people. It's like, it's so sick to see how much work is done and nothing would be done without them, which is so cool. Uh, has it changed the way that you consume stuff? And I'm thinking of like, there hasn't been a Super Bowl halftime show since you've been home, but like, uh, yeah, as you're watching, uh, as, can you watch a Taylor Swift show? Like, I don't know what the big thing is. It's kind of equivalent for you, but like, has it changed the way you digest that big thing and appreciation for that? Do you feel more like aware of Taylor Swift as a human unless as a performer? Like, yeah, has it changed your A little worldview? bit, yeah, it's... Because at the end of the day, people look at this of like, oh, this is like a really cool thing. And it's like you uh, you go to a show every day. It's like at the end of the day, it's still a job. Like we are still working mm-hmm. and we're working for extended hours. We're working. Some people work 24-7. The stage manager, Chris, he was the first one up and the, like all the time. I never saw that dude not working. And it blows my mind how he was just going. But at the same time, it's like you also watch these famous musicians who you think have it all. And it's there sad because they're missing their son's football game and they're away from their family and they're not able to have that time. And it's also, you understand like what's put out into the public versus what's actually going on are two very different things. Sometimes something, sometimes it's like, yeah, this is, yeah. And it's just like, it's to protect the band. It's there's so there's politics for lack Mm -hmm. of a better word in it. So I definitely look at that things differently and with a greater appreciation of what's going on and the caliber and the amount of work and energy and time everything takes. And at first something to go, if something minor is to go wrong or something big is to go wrong, it's like, hey, this stuff happens, and it's, like, how fans look at it and see it. This should be perfect. You do this all the time. And it's, like, no, you don't understand, like, A, B, C, D had mm-hmm. to go wrong. Like, it just is what it is. So yeah. I, I, it's made me look at my past concerts more so differently, mm-hmm. like, especially Warp Tour because that's what started it all for me. It's, like, 
oh my God, what these people were doing then. And we would just walk in and be like, this is so much fun and whatever. And people fuck around and like, I'm sure mess with things and whatever. And it's like, yeah, if you steal a t-shirt from a band, that is a big deal. Like you are taking a major hit. Working with venues, oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Some venues, incredible. Some, absolute nightmare. So it's like, you might think it's the band, but it's the venue, but the who takes the hit is like the person in front of you. And it's like, all that stuff is just like, you would never think of it until you're in it, which is crazy. Uh, you talked about all the attention to detail. And I think the um, taking the hit is a good thing of like, missing the football game, I think is a great example. And I think it's a great example because it's a safe example. And of course, a lot of times it's uh, death in the family. It's an addiction. Like there's yeah. something more nefarious or darker that we don't want to talk about. So I'll stick with a football game yeah. uh, because it's easy. But like, I think that's interesting because we there's a psychology study that's always stuck in my brain. So if you have a tip jar on your on your lemonade stand or whatever, like if this if the tip jar is full, you'll get more donations coming in. Yep. And if it's empty, no one touches it at all. I've actually found the opposite. Interesting. Okay. Uh, well, where I was going with that, <laughs> you kind of ruined my point. <laughs> Sorry. No. Uh, but it's interesting of like the with the band, it's like we want to support someone who loves what they do. And if the the if Taylor Swift is coming out saying I'm missing my son's football game like that almost attracts from her ability to sell tickets right like yeah. it's, it is part of their job to be larger than life and to be big every day yeah and it's tough that yeah part of that is the mundane things like it's easy to be the rocks when you're on stage but it's being off stage and not letting the human come out of you as well that's yeah. also important it's daily life is still going on for these people I watch people have relationship issues and they're going through arguments and literally like fighting for their life to like mm -hmm. save their relationship and all that. And then they have to hop on stage and pretend everything's fine and like put on this whole rock star or lifestyle and be like this badass person. But it's also like they were crying 20 minutes ago because they're like going through it. And it's like people don't accept that. They like you said, they look at them like inhuman and it's like no, they still go through the same thing you do. They just have to pretend they don't. And as somebody, as people who do content, we also have to make it look like things are bigger than they are. Our green rooms, if we got one, 90% of the time we were in a bathroom that were people were using. And it's like, but it's like, did convenient. I? Oh, super convenient. It was great. We made, we made the best of it. We brought couches, tables, whatever. We had a chill time, but it's like, can I show that? No, if I do, I have to make it look like this badass fun time. But mm -hmm. it's like, what do people, um, Brady Benjamin, they would always have people during their, um, sound check. And somebody asked one day, like, oh, what do you guys do? Like during your off time? And Keith was just like, fucking nothing. And that's so true. Like what do bands do in between? It's like, we're not, they're not adventuring and going all the, all these things. It's like, they're trying to deal with their daily life while not home. And they're just like, chill. Like, we're just trying to figure it out. And then you do your job and then you do it in the next place. Like, Which I think is always an interesting crossroads that then you have someone who is on the road and maybe not feeling great about it because they're missing too many football games. And again, yeah. that's not maybe the perfect example, but it's the easiest one to work with. Uh, but then there's also like the guilt that comes from being on stage and it's like you are living your dream. It is yeah. what we started this conversation kind of on the high of you getting the tour. And it's like, that is what they're still feeling on some level, everyone. And I oh, of course. Don't name, but like, that's, they're living that. And it's this contradiction then of like, I am still bummed that everything is going wrong, that there's so much mess behind the scenes, but I'm also living my dream. And that's a really like, that's always at odds. I feel like it's yep. always a, a tense thing and, uh, or kind of a under the surface tension that's yeah. going on with everyone. With literally every single person there, everybody has a loved one at home who knows who's going through what? This was my first time on the road, first time away from my family, and my family has major medical issues. Like, my thought every other day was like, yes, I am living my dream. This is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me, and I hope I can do this forever, but also I'm not there for my family right now. And what if something happens? Like, I'm not there. And that's what, like, mm -hmm. you feel that. And every single person there felt that in one way or another. Mm -hmm. And so it is, like, a weird balance of, like, some days it's really awesome, and then other days it's like... I don't know, man. And that's why people can't do it forever. And I feel like that's why certain bands take hiatuses. It's like you need to like step back and be like, all right, yes, I am living my dream. And people do this. It's it's a job. You bring in money to finance and take care of your family. But at mm -hmm. the same time, it's like it takes you away from them. So there's always there is a, a toll. It's not this perfect life that people think it is. Uh, did you know that going into it? Yeah, I knew it wasn't this like magical, amazing thing. And I've heard so many stories, which is why I was like, am I even going to like this? Like, I don't know. Like, it's going to be tough, like living in a living in the back of a car with like four strangers. Like, I don't yeah. know. Um, it wasn't as rough as I expected it to go 
going into it. But there were times that it like hits you of like, I miss home. I miss my own bed. I would love to go like see my friend right now or like Mm -hmm. go grocery shopping for myself and eat something that I want to eat. Like Mm -hmm. you get told it's not like, oh, it's not like, oh, you're eating this. It's like, okay, yeah, you get creating, which is so sick that it's like, that's food that's provided. I don't have to buy McDonald's every day, but at the same time, it's like, you don't get to choose when to eat. And they're like, okay, you're given these hours for this meal and these hours for this meal. If you miss that, like you miss eating that day. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, sometimes I don't want that. (laughs) Like, I don't want to eat that. Like, I don't want to eat chicken breast and white rice again. Or it's like, I want to choose it. I want to eat it at nine o'clock instead of eight o'clock. Like, I don't Uh, know. College, I had a dining hall in the basement of my dorm. And I frequently on the weekends would oversleep and have to eat chicken wings for breakfast because I would just (laughs) miss the breakfast. And it like ruined wings for me. Yeah. (laughs) Because I just, they're like a breakfast food for me, which is so fucked up. (laughs) But yeah, I feel that. It's weird having someone else. And like, I don't know. I think as an artist, we value our own time. We value being able to control of things. You have to surrender so much control to make that life work. Absolutely. Which Uh, is like, in some cases, it's really cool. Because it's like, I didn't have to worry about like filling up my car with gas or like, Going, going to the grocery store, there's like so many daily factors I didn't have to worry about, which is cool because it's like all I had to worry about was like the job for that day mm-hmm. of like getting, make sure the band has everything they need. They are where they are. The content gets done. It's like that's all I had to worry about. But at the same time, some days it was like, yeah, I would like to like worry about something else or it's like we would get to the venue at like two o'clock. Catering would end at three. So we'd have to eat immediately, get like merch, get everything set, sound check, and then you eat again. And it's just like all your meals are right on top of each other. But it's, do you want that? No. But do you have any other choice? Like, no. And it's like, okay, like that doesn't work for me, but all righty, that's what we're going to do. So yeah, it's certain freedoms are sacrificed. Uh, I remember when I would come home from tour, like getting gas again and all those things were the cumbersome, annoying stuff. Has that been the challenge of adjusting of like, yeah, getting used to grocery shopping, like you're excited for it, but it is also annoying <laughs> not to have someone just bring you a plate of food. In essence. Oh my God. Yeah. Now I, I feel like a little bit spoiled because <laughs> yeah. now I'm like, I, I don't care what I eat as long as it's like clean and healthy at this point. The first time back grocery shopping, I think I circled the store at least like six times. And I'm like, this is sad because I work here too. And I'm like, I know where everything is. I know what it is. But I'm like, what am I doing? What am I making? Like Mm -hmm. certain things just like aren't important to me right now. And Mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, you get so used to one lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And then immediately you're shoved back into another. And the second you get comfortable with that, it's like you get thrown right back into being in the road. And so the like getting comfortable with things is really, really weird. And like not comfortable, like being home for me has been super, super tough because Mm -hmm. I also got used to the dynamic of there's always somebody around. You have this like family. Mm -hmm. I've never other than my actual family and like growing up in life, I've never lived with four dudes like that before. I've had roommates, whatever. It's probably a good thing. A lot of context. (laughs) Yeah. No, for sure. But it's like I've never been with somebody (laughs) for that like been close with that people for that period of time. It's like we lived together for over a month and now it's like, and it's like doing stupid stuff of like having to go to the store, like go get gas. It was always Mm -hmm. like something we all did together. It was always inside jokes. Like it's this really intimate relationship that evolved. Absolutely. And it's like things we went through. It's like, I can only relate to those four people with that stuff. And now it's like, I come home and if I want to make like these little jokes, it's like, Oh, I can't. And mm-hmm. it's like, they can't relate. So people are asking like house tour and all this. And I'm like, oh, it was great. But it's like all the little things that I want to explain. It's like, oh, you won't like get it. And it's like, I miss, I miss my friends mm-hmm. and coming back and like living by myself and being on my own. It's like, where'd everybody go? Like, I really yep. liked that. It's like, oh, like that was, that was a huge like hit for me. We, uh, you are getting all my segues right for me. So yeah. I wanted to get a touch on like, yeah, the tour friendships are such a weird thing. And so for me, one of my buddies from Louisiana is on tour right now and he's coming through the area this nice. weekend and I'm like the most excited, like I cleared my whole calendar to like make it happen. And like, <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to catch up with him and make that happen. The, but it is a weird thing that it's like, yeah, I'm seeing him working and like, yeah, I'm not going to see the rest of them unless yeah. I go down there to work. Cause neither of us are like financially able to just like <laughs> yeah. take time off, buy a flight, go get a hotel, whatever the bullshit entails. So it's like, we're kind of, our friendship is kind of tied to this work, but it's like, we can't work all the time. And in the context of tour, it's like, you're not going to tour the same bands all the time. Yeah. And even if you did, there's going to be some new faces. It's going to be a different lineup in a different place. Like it, yeah. it, it'll it never be this again, which exactly. is so hard of like, you made all these good friends and it's beautiful and it's the best time of your life. And then it's over. And like, we normally like you leave college, you go back to college. Like yeah. this tour ends, like you don't go, you can go yeah. to another tour, which you are and yeah. awesome. We'll get there. But like, it's not the same tour. It's not the same people. And it'll be hopefully as great with 
new people that you'll meet and like yeah. things you didn't know you were missing on tour. It's like going to a new school every few months. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how has that been? Like, yeah, the challenges of not having people there. I don't know. It's such a weird thing. I don't know how to like remedy that of like it, it creates such like a disjointed friendships for us. It's just yeah. disjoint, weird relationships of like, even with the people in Connecticut, it's like someone's in Cape Cod, Raquel's in Cape Cod. So yeah. I don't see her as much as I should. Um, but then Louisiana is even further. And of course now <laughs> yeah. you've had a whole network of people. Have you kept in touch with them? Like how has that coming back home been? So kept in minor touch. Unfortunately, I've just been, I've had, I overwhelmed myself with too many jobs mm -hmm. coming back, which definitely something I learned the hard way of like, don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's made it tough. But now it's, I'm really realizing the importance of social media in that aspect. I hate using social media, which is ironic for somebody who has to like create contact and mm -hmm. run social media for bands. As far as that's concerned, like that's cool. But running my own, I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. Um, so it's important of that aspect of keeping contact with people from that, even if it's just like liking a story or responding to minor things here and there to remind people of like, Hey, I'm still here. I still like give a shit about you. Like this friendship wasn't like worthless. Yeah. Um, what is cool is like, okay, now I know people in all these random places and random States. So if I roll through, like your friend is like, Oh, Hey, I can call them up be like, Hey, you around like whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's a really cool thing. Cause I've never traveled too, too much. So I didn't know too many people outside of it. But it is heartbreaking of like, especially towards the end is when we really came together. Like there was one night. Right in when you become friends, it's over. Exactly. Yeah. And there was one night in Kentucky. We were all like hanging out and it was the most random place on the planet. But we had so much fun together. Yeah. And it was just like that memory will stay, stand with me forever. Mm -hmm. Ironic for the amount of drinking that was happening <laughs> that night. Um, but it's just like that's when it all came together. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. having to say goodbye was just like. Oh. Yeah. And it's not like you got to go up and say goodbye to every single person. Like some people, it's just like you just didn't see them. Yeah. So luckily, I knew I would have another tour with uh, Breaking Benjamin. So it was like, oh, okay, cool. Like I know I can go back to those friends. And mm -hmm. then I know another day dawns. Like we have future plans together. So mm -hmm. it's like I know I'll see them. But especially leaving them that was so hard for me. It's like, yep. we got back to Pennsylvania and it's like, we're getting our stuff. It's like 4 a.m. Obviously all of us are exhausted and it would just kind of hit us and we all just looked at each other and went just like, <laughs> it's going to be like months before we see each other again. Like we just lived together every day and went through literally everything possible together. Yep. And now it's like, okay, bye. <laughs> like, Oh, okay. So that's definitely uh, an adjustment that I'm not a huge fan of. I appreciate yeah. the positives of it of now I can kind of have friends a little bit of everywhere, but it's also like, Oh, you're well, not here. Now you do have friends everywhere and you have a reason to go see all them this yeah. summer. Uh, so you mentioned you are going back out with Breaking Benjamin uh, for <laughs> direct support for Disturbed, uh, which is so, the coolest yes, thing ever. Yes. Um, I know you're not going to get to see much of their set every night because you're going to end up working during it, but like, I'll be there in spirit every night. Um, how's that feel? So what's the difference between tour number two and tour number one? So you kind of went into tour number one with nothing and now you've got some experience, but like, yeah, I'm assuming you're going in with more responsibility. Like it's a bigger tour than it was before. Like is yeah. it different? Yeah. What? So I will be, as far as I know, just content for Breaking Benjamin. So like photo, video stuff. The video is the bigger aspect. So that's like a fun thing of like, okay, all new gear that I just didn't drop like thousands of dollars for the first tour. It's fine. Um, so this tour is now two months. It hits the entire U.S. So it is a bit longer. What's cool is it hits the like New England area halfway through. So I will be able to like come home and kind that's of be nice. like, like have a day of like see friends and family and then go back out. Mm -hmm. Um, which it'll also be cool that I can have like friends and family come out to shows now that mm -hmm. we'll be in like the closer area, which is cool. Um, so these venues are even bigger. Um, so we went from like 10,000 cap rooms to now these are like 20,000 cap places and it's like all outdoor. Mm -hmm. Um, my cousin sent me the venue in New York and it's literally in the water, which is so sick. I'm so excited for that. Um, what is interesting is Breaking Benjamin won't be the headliner, um, Disturbed Will. So I'm interested to see if the dynamic with the band changes at all. Cause like now you're not top dog, but it's like, does daily life for you guys change or does it just like get bigger for the bigger band? Like I'm interested to see how that goes. Um, Ginger is the opener and I'm just really excited to have like another female on the tour, like guaranteed. Cause that is also not really a thing for mm -hmm. the last tour. There was only three of us, which was cool. Everybody was super welcoming and like, there was no, no bad anything. Like every guy on there was super nice, super respectful. How many ish total people? Oh God. That's like a great 50, question. 100, 1000. 60-ish maybe. Okay. Um, yeah. I gotta look at the crew photo and count. Um, <laughs> I think that's, um, going back to like the friend thing, I think that's, 
why the crew photo is even that much more important and like such a good tradition. It's mm-hmm. like, yeah, that tour will never happen again, but at least you have that picture with those people. Mm-hmm. That was such like a dream come true for me when we like finally did that and I had one where I'm in it. It's like, yeah, this was my crew photo. Mm-hmm. Like that's so cool. It's like you carry that with you forever. So even if you're not with those people, it's like at least you have that picture, sure. which is really cool. Um, so I'm excited for the next one too. Something to collect, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this next tour, obviously... It's like the minor things that I'm interested in being different, like the weather. It's going to be super hot. So I'm interested to see how like that goes and how that affects people with the band not being headliner. That'll be really interesting if anything changes, because it's like. I don't want to say ego is involved. It's not that, but it's like certain tiers of like depending on if you're the headliner, direct support opener, it's like you're allowed certain things of like. If you're the opener, you're not going to have the best light show. The headliner is and different things like that. So I'm really interested to see how that, because I just watched these guys for a month and like their show and now I kind of got it down. I'm interested to see if it changes at all or if they have to change anything because they're not the top dog on the bill or just the interaction between the other bands. That's going to be the most interesting thing for me. Hell yeah. Yeah. All the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. All the, all the lifetime stuff. Uh, what I know you touched on venues. Uh, there was one like, like rock venue you were in somewhere in the middle of the country like what stands out of all the places you've been uh all the yeah you've seen i think it was like half the country i don't think it was full to the west coast yeah it was like midwest Um, and then some of the south but yeah what stands out you mentioned the ihop in louisiana (laughs) which isn't the most seating example uh but yeah what are the highlights from the from the trip uh so the rave was super sick so the rave i've seen so many bands go there and like talk about that place it was kind of cool to like finally go there and like hit the like hot spot for Mm -hmm. bands um so it's in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which also my favorite place. Hey, right? you know, all I could think of was that '70s show. Like that's all I could think of. Because I watch all the shows, you know, <laughs> I've seen that one too. Right. <laughs> um, so what's cool about that place is they have uh, it's haunted apparently, and right up your alley. <laughs> right. So there's a pool in the basement that that's is the famous fully pool. signed. So that's the famous pool, right? Mm-hmm. I never knew it was there until somebody was like, "Yo, this is where the pool is," and I freaked out. So there's a haunted pool in the basement. And band sign, like, it is covered in signatures of, like, all different bands, every walk of life. Like, it's so sick to see, like, all the random names up there. And the rule is you can sign inside the pool if you sell at the venue three times. So I think Seven Dust is in there. I forget who else. That's the one that, like, they had the biggest one. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, So that was, like, crazy cool to walk into. And the venue itself, it looks like the inside of, like, a genie's lamp. Like, it is so cool. Venue wise, it's not like realistic. Um, like load in, they had to do the drum risers and everything with a crane through his two story window. So like that's a nightmare. New York City piano style. Yeah, <laughs> literally, so literally. Luckily, I didn't have to be involved in any of that. But even like the layout of the venue doesn't make sense. Like where merch is and where the state. It is a maze. I got lost. Most mm-hmm. venues are exactly the same except for that one. Like it's a maze and you will get lost. So I understand yeah. how it's haunted. Um, the also like the big thing of it is the hotel across the street is where Jeffrey Dahmer used to like take his victims and kill them. Um, and he Perfect. would like actually take them. So the rave used to be this like community center, whatever, I guess, where people would like public pool <laughs> and he would take people from there. So I was just like spooky. Um, so that place definitely stood out. Um, that was super cool. Um, there was a place in Pikeville, Kentucky. Another one of my favorite places. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this place was wild. It had no business calling itself an arena. <laughs> it just did. Hell yeah. It was just like smack dab in the middle of this like little town. Like the town is cute and everything, but then it's just like venue, which was next to a jail. So immediately like we pulled up and they're like, don't go anywhere by yourself. Stay in the fence. And I was like. Okay. You guys just played next to all the hot spots in the country. We really did. It was so ra- like just the most random places, just the most random places. But oh, it was yeah. like okay, cool. But we partied so hard after, and it was a great time. And all I could think was like, everybody in jail is watching us. Right now. Yards over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like oh, this is like kind of crazy thing we're doing right now. Yeah. Um. Trying to think. It's wild to like see that much of the country. I think we're kind of the same. We're like, we've been around New England, like we're comfortable in this area, yeah. but like we haven't spent a ton of time in yeah. the West Coast and the South forever. And it is really interesting to see how different the world gets. And it's, I think yeah. in the, the Midwest, it's the flat that always surprises me of just like how much nothing there is around. Everybody's always said that it's like super flat. And mm-hmm. then actually seeing it for yourself and being used to like mountains and whatever is mm-hmm. like, oh, wow, it's just 
I never realized there it were really mountains around here until I went out there. And then yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I get what's... We were driving yeah. back from one venue and somebody told us like, oh, yeah, the view is like super nice, mm -hmm. like whatever. And we were driving and we're like, this is normal for us. Like, what? Like, it just yeah. looked like regular New England to us. And we were somewhere like in the Midwest and we're like... Oh, right. There's nothing out here. This is cool for you guys. Yeah. Okay, cool. Gives yeah. you a little more appreciation for home for sure. Hell yeah. Um, all the venues kind of like blended together in my head, to be honest, because it's just like every day you're somewhere else, yeah. which is why now uh, if a band says the wrong place, like I, I've, I'm like, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. Cause it's like, you see the inside of the venue more than you see anything else. Yeah. Um, what really stood out for me <laughs> was Bucky's, the gas station. Yes. Oh my God, I could spend it like a week <laughs> in there. It was the coolest place ever. Like, it was such a big deal for like the Breaking Benjamin crew. They have, um, so we call it like Roadie Friday. Anytime there's a, a day off the next day, that's when you like party the night before. Sure. And they all have like matching Bucky's outfits, which I'm like going into this. I had like heard of Bucky's and I knew it was a gas station. I didn't know it was the caliber mm -hmm. of what it is. And now it's all I can think about and talk about and like everything. I'm like, I want to be sponsored by this it's place because so it's so sick. Like you just walk in, it's bigger than a grocery store. There's merch, there's beavers everywhere. And I'm just like, oh my God. And we like ran into Bush's crew as we walked in there. So it just became like this <laughs> even bigger deal. And it's all I could think about. And the rest of the tour, like anytime we saw a sign, we all like freaked out. So that was super, super fun. I feel like when I'm walking in public and I see someone like a Bucky's hat, I'm like, oh, you're definitely in a band. <laughs> yeah, right? There's certain things that like stand out. So yeah. my first tour ever, I hit Wawa Sheets and Bucky's for the first time like ever. So Hell I feel yeah. very like blessed for that. Hell yeah. I don't know if I've actually been to Bucky's in person. I've definitely done Wawa and Sheets, but I don't think I've ever made it. I highly Bucky's. suggest it. I'll buy it's my plane amazing. ticket today. Yeah, I don't it's know. amazing. <laughs> it's really in my hands at this point. <laughs> That'd be a fun road trip. That'd be a dumb road trip. Um, I would do. I think the north closest one is like North Carolina or something. Oh, easy. Yeah, that's yeah. a good trip. That's there like not back. bad. Yeah. Okay, it's I like mean, two days. Yeah, you're all biased. You've been traveling everywhere. Uh, <laughs> looking ahead to tour number two. What's exciting to you? What's challenging? What's interesting? Like you've you've done it in some sense, right? Like you've you've asserted that your dream is what you hoped it would be, that you yeah. enjoyed it. Uh, what makes tour number two exciting or special? Uh, so this will be my first time on a tour bus. I actually get the tour bus life, so I'm excited yeah. for okay. that. Funk life, the whole. Yeah. Hell yeah. So I also don't know what to expect as far as that's concerned because mm -hmm. I know it's like 10 to 12 people on a bus. So mm -hmm. I'm like, that's different. Um, I think I'm a little nervous because now it's like I feel like I really am on my own. When I was with Another Day Dawns, it's like those were my dudes. That was like my family. So yeah. even when we were apart from the other bands, it's like we were always together. And mm -hmm. I felt like that gave me a sense of comfort and now it's like I do have a comfort already going in, knowing the Breaking Benjamin crew and the band, which is super helpful. It's like I can walk in and I'm already very comfortable with these people. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like, am I going to have that closeness of like everybody's always running around doing something because yeah. they have such a like an awesome and big production that I'm like, am I really just am I going to be on my own that much more? Yeah. Also with Another Day Dawns, like I was tour managing them. So I had a bunch of running around to do, which I loved because like sitting around for me and just like waiting and being like is there something to do like that's not for me like I want to mm -hmm. keep going and blink and have the day be over so I'm sure I'm going to be doing more than content and like helping out and like doing PA things but I'm like what is my day going to look like you mm -hmm. know is how how different is it going to be because the caliber of the band is different their requirements are going to be different even the way they put up their content like I just send in the content. Like, I don't even run that part anymore. So as far as the expectations of what my job are, it's it's going to be different going into it. And the length of time. I'm like, it's two, two months is, where I'm yeah. going to hit my gap and be like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Or am I going to be like, oh, no, that was fine. I can keep going. Because I know, like, when I come back home, it's not going to be for very long. And then I'm going to be back out. So I'm like... All right, where am I where am I gonna hit my point of like mm -hmm. I need to rest? So it's it's still I have some experience, but this is gonna I think answer a few more questions that like I have or I'll learn that I'll have, you know? Yeah. Which I think is a really fun journey. I think that's kind of what we've uh I've summarized my job as finding something that bothers me and fixing it. Yeah. And I think to some degree that's kind of what you're doing is you're saying like the, it bothers me that I haven't done this yet. Let me go fix it. Let me figure out how I can do this yeah. thing. Uh, and it's kind of just a fun process of like, yeah, we're always gonna have that itch 
uh, there's a there's a quote on the wall over there that's like uh, we're never satisfied and it's our job just to let the energy like flow through it's like it's our job just to keep doing the thing and yeah it's like gonna be good bad whatever it's gonna be what it is but it's our job just to keep doing it and not let th- those comparisons or the fears or whatever get in the way and it's been fun to watch you like go out and explore the journey and like live vicariously through you as you do <laughs> yeah. it um, and of course yeah rewarding to kind of watch you like grow like i think we've all kind of grown together since we were yeah whatever coming into the web server and doing all the all the dirty work together for 20 bucks a night or whatever the fun stuff was yeah and now um, watching everybody go in like so many different directions yeah. like wow like we used to do photo shoots for like 50 bucks and now it's like hell yeah nope 55 yeah time. really <laughs> um, big bucks this time yeah it's it's i never thought this would happen i went into like photography with like i'm gonna go on tour Back in my head, I was like, you're fucking lying, bro. Like, that's not happening. Like, whatever. You're going to get as far as you get, and you'll find a regular job and whatever. Like, the fact that I got this call at all is crazy, and the fact that it continued. Like, the second day I shot for Breaking Benjamin is when they were like, what are you doing this summer? And I was like, what? (laughs) What Me? Again? Like, me? Are you sure? My other fun mantra has been that you see what you aim at. And I really like that idea of, like, yeah, if if, if you got a camera and you told yourself, like, no. This wouldn't have happened. Like, this only happens because there's some part of your brain that allowed, like, you're telling me with your words right now that you didn't think this was going to happen, and I don't believe you. I believe that in some part of your gut, like, you believed this was going to happen. And, like, it's this crazy thing. Like, and for me, it's uh, playing pro soccer as a kid. Like, yeah. it's crazy to believe that I would have been in that 1% of 1% people. But, like, in some part of my stomach, like, I believe that with every part of my fiber. Yeah. And I think the same thing with the camera here. It's like, you're telling me you didn't believe it, but in some part of you, you had to go... No, I think there's I think there's a way. I don't know what that road is. I don't know how long it is. Yeah. I don't know anything about that. But I think there's a path from here to there. And I think that's the key of of anyone who starts anything and has any success in it is like just you can't start on day one and set any limit. It has to start day one of like, I'm gonna go to the moon. <laughs> like, yeah, you just gotta keep trying. It really yeah. is. You just have to keep trying. There's so many times yeah. that I like stopped and started or like stopped for a little bit longer. It was like, yeah, no, I'm gonna give up. And like mm-hmm. for a while I'd switch to food photography and I've been working with like restaurants and stuff. Mm-hmm. Because I really did think, like, the tour thing wasn't really going to happen. and But like you said, yeah, in the back of my head, I was like, ah, oh, no, it's not going to happen. And I had to, like, mentally just prepare myself and be like, if it doesn't happen, that's okay. Mm-hmm. But I never stopped trying. I always pushed. There's always if it doesn't happen, not it is not going to happen. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it's just, like, one thing is, like, I I don't like to give up on things. Like, I'll keep pushing. And, yeah, I'll get knocked down sometimes. And sometimes I'll be down for a while. But it's like, you got to just keep getting back up. And people would ask me, like, on the road, like, how'd you get this? And I'm like, dude, I just kept going. And then I, right place, right time. It's like, you put pay your dues. Like, I've te- I've been doing this for, like, 10 years. Hmm. This is my first, like, actual tour. Like, I've done small stuff here and there. I've been with local bands that are incredible. And I love them to, to like, the half-hearted dudes have supported me since day one. And I love them to death. And I can't wait for them to tour the world. Like, that'll be so sick. And I want to see my friends grow like that. I never thought that would I would have that chance. And now that things are turning around for me, I'm like, okay, maybe other things I didn't think were possible are possible. And it was so funny before I left for this, I went and spoke at my high school about like being a photographer. And I got to stand up in a room full of people and be like, I decided in this school that I was going to do this. And now I'm talking to you about doing this job. And I'm like, that shows you it's possible. Because I was just sitting in this school, just being a person. And it was like, oh, this music's cool. Like, whatever. Yeah. It's all it took. And I'm like, so now it's like, yo, it's it really is possible. Even if you don't think it's possible. Like, I hope everybody takes a chance and does whatever it is that they, like, really, really want to do. Because the life I was living, I wasn't happy. Like I'm very grateful for my friends and families and opportunities and I've set up a decent life for myself, but I wasn't waking up happy every day. Mm -hmm. This tour, I woke up happy every single day, even the most stressful parts. Mm -hmm. I was happy and I was grateful and that people deserve to wake up and feel like that every day in their own lives. So if that is anything, if I can do it and like, (laughs) yeah, literally anybody can do it. It's just, just keep trying. Like, that's it. Just be a cool person. Keep trying. You'll be able to swing it. Like swear to God, that's all it takes. Hell yeah. I think it's a perfect place to wrap up. Dom, you nailed that one. I'm proud of you. I'm stoked for you. I'm stoked you made it here and I'm stoked to catch up uh, on all the stuff that I can't turn to a microphone right now. (laughs) Um, before I do that and ruin most of my life, um, 
where can people find you? Where should people look out for? Where do they follow you online? What do people send you messages on if they want to talk to you, if they want to give you money, or if they just tell you you're awesome? Um, Instagram is the best place to find me. It's where I'm most active. Dominique DC Photo. Hell yeah. Um, and Instagram, um, Facebook, I need to open up to be a more public forum. I, like, lost all my social media and had it all taken before I left, so I had to, yep. like, create new stuff. So if I don't have you on it, it's not personal. I just lost everything. She literally told me it's personal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, just for you. Um, <laughs> I just blocked you on everything. Um, so, yeah, Instagram is the best way to contact us. So find me, and then Facebook, I'll, I'll get there. Hell, yeah. Good luck this summer. Well, we will talk you. soon. Um, Thanks for yeah. having me.